Well, I've particularly addressed which ones are used in pediatric Brugada syndrome. And pediatric Brugada syndrome is harder to diagnose than adult Brugada syndrome. The type 1 ECG is much less common. So what we've done is gone through all the electric, uh, electrocardiogram parameters and a special kind of electrocardiogram called a signal average electrocardiogram, where we take 250 beats and average them together. And indeed, you know, if you think about uh, offspring of parents with Brugada syndrome, they have about a 50-50 chance of having disease. And when we do that test, about 50% end up having an abnormal signal average DCG. So most of the children are asymptomatic, and for them, uh, we tend not to introduce any primary therapies, um, but we do try to uh, counsel the parents about uh, avoiding fever and treating fever aggressively, and then coming back for a yearly assessment to see whether they have any risk factors for uh, symptomatic episodes. For the symptomatic children with Brigada syndrome, they can often be very symptomatic, even though it's a very rare presentation. And for them, again, it's a very difficult uh, uh, choice about how to treat them. Um, things like defibrillators, um, can be placed in small children, but usually through non-standard approaches that raise the risk of complications of defibrillator. So we take a very measured approach. Occasionally for very severe patients, we'll also treat them um, with quinidine, uh, which is also used in adults. Um, and then when we put defibrillators in children, often we have to put them on the outside of the heart. So while we're there, we may take the approach that would normally be done with a catheter uh, in the adults and actually do an ablation of the outside of the heart or the epicardium of the heart while replacing the defibrillator. Yeah, so Arrhythmia Alliance actually has been very helpful to us. So I, uh, half of my time is at a, as a basic scientist and more and more um, uh, scientific investigations need um, patient and patient advocacy group input uh, right from the very beginning of putting together a proposal and, um, and identifying, you know, how, will it uh, benefit the patients? Do the patients feel included in the science? And so it's really been through uh, Arrhythmia Alliance uh, individuals like Trudy Lobin and others that, uh, that have provided us with that input to our grants and provided us with increased success on our grants and increased information for the patients.